It's still October, so you know what that means. Business planning month. Today, measure and track your results. On the Wandering But Not Lost podcast. Welcome to Wandering But Not Lost, your online source for finding balance so that you can align, connect, and prosper. I'm living right here now and I don't want to miss out. Is this what life's all about? The world is calling and I'm listening. And now your hosts, Jen O'Brien and Matt Emerson. Well, welcome to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. This is episode 140. You can find all of our show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com. Jen O'Brien, we're into October. We're into week, what, four of business planning? That's right. Uh, so what do yes, we have on the agenda for today? Yes, and just as a quick recap, in case you're just catching this episode, go back and go to the show notes over at WBNLpodcast.com, where you will see that we talked first, of course, about reviewing your current year and getting a handle on what's worked out, what's not worked out. Can't get into business planning for the new year until you review where you've been. Then step one in our business plan, that's kind of like pre-step, step zero. Step one is writing your goals. We've covered that. And... Then last week we talked about the actual business plan and we got into talking very good uh, ideas about things that you need to do to get out and make your goals happen as far as how many closings that you want. So today I want to get into measuring and tracking your results and a couple other tools that we have for you, some downloads that are in our absolutely free video training course on business planning and goal setting over at WBNLcoaching.com. So if you go over there, you can get links in the show notes. We, we offer module one of our core training system called Connecting Your Real Estate Business, which will give you a little insight into the rest of our training, but it's completely free because that's how much Matt Emerson and I believe in business planning. You better believe that. that's the whole deal. You know what? We're here to help you. We want to lift up the freaking industry. So put your plan together, people. Come on. All right. You're listening to the Wandering But Not Lost podcast, where real estate and reality meet. Join us and subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. Let's go ahead and dive in and just talk about it, okay? So step three, measure and track your results. You know, you cannot improve what you don't measure. And we've given you everything that you need. You don't have to recreate anything. We've got an eight tab you know, uh, auto-calculating spreadsheet to do your business plan. If that's overwhelming, we've even included a simpler version, which is a little three-tab plan. But today I really want to talk about tracking systems and things that you can do. So let's talk about a couple of the other documents that are in the downloads besides the goal writing package and the actual business plan. We've given you a blank income and expense statement. Now this is an awesome thing to just track something very simple every month. Just a little bit of a metric on how you're doing, which would be how much revenue came in from closings, from referrals, from, you know, pretty much that's it, unless you do property management or something. And then what were your expenses for the month? And to be able to get your expenses for the month, there's it is kind of outlined more like you would give to an accountant high level. We do have a business budget that breaks it down uh, very, very uh, detailed, very granular. So use that business budget. I think you also need a home budget, a personal yeah, budget, right? Absolutely. So if you know what, it, and here's what we always say: if you've got, if you if you are just taking care of all the expenses yourself, and real estate is your only source of income, then 100 percent of your revenue has to cover your business expenses, which include marketing and all your fees and, and so on. But it also has to cover your living expenses. You know, what does it cost you to run your household and to cover any debt that you have? So you got to have all that in your business plan. And we've given you those documents in this free training course. And really, really with that, just on that note for a second, just seeing your personal expenses and stuff, that really helps you during tax time too for, for write-offs and things like that. So, you know, it's important to have all that information at your fingertips. It makes your life a lot easier. Now, the last document that I want to talk about before we sort of just get into some other tracking and measuring uh, ideas and good practices for your overall business plan is the last tab of our eight tab business plan is a really awesome, uh, which a lot of our clients love this the most because it has a way to track your commissions. It actually has a way to track your active listings, your pending escrows, and then your, um, you know, closed transactions. And so we, when we created this, 
I don't even remember how, if who, who ultimately helped us with all this, but it's somebody who really knows Excel yeah. to be able to, to turn the cell green when it's closed, orange when it's pending, blue means an active listing. And it, it, in our training course, we tell you exactly how to do that. It's not rocket science. It's really straightforward. But what I love about this spreadsheet is that if you just even just use the beginning of, of this business plan in the end, the stuff that's in the middle breaks it down into marketing and a marketing calendar and how much money you're going to spend. Then we have this great section in the business plan on, uh, we talked a little bit about it last week, the, the, the section where you can fill out the, um, like let's say you're going to do your database or you choose one of the target niches that you're going to work on. There's an area for you to put down what's the activity and is it have any expense to it. Uh, but that last tab will let you put your active listings in and it, and it, and it tracks all the key numbers that you need from list price to sales price to days on market to who's your client where did they come from how much commission did you make did you have to pay a referral what were the fees that you paid to your company all the way across and then it just calculates for you as you go down so you put your active listings in you put your active escrows in when your listing gets into escrow there's a column for you to put that in escrow and it turns the blue to orange orange means escrow and then the best part when it closes you put the real closing numbers in and then that turns the orange to green. And now at the end of the year, if you do this as you work at the end of the year, throughout the year, you have the best document to see how am I doing? Right. What do I have in the pipe? This is not pipeline, actually. Pipeline is a whole nother uh, document to track and measure. And it's to create what do you have coming? What's coming up in the next 30, 60, 90 days? Right. That's not active. You know, those are leads and prospects and pipeline. This, this, is actually, business, right? this is actually, you know, what what's business? This will help you at the end of the year when it's time to review. So a couple weeks ago, the very beginning of October, you would take this document and use it to do your year in review. Right. As as, and I just I have to I'm stressing a lot today that just do this one thing. OK, you get clear about what your goals are. Keep it simple. But just do this one thing and track this. Use this tracking system. I will tell you why, because I'm in the middle of doing our transition and I'm going to just name it. I am not doing my own best practice. It's been on my list forever. And I have to now go back just like all of you because you haven't been doing this. So I'm gonna do it too. And I have to now go back and complete my closing report for all of our team members, which we've been doing really well. But now I'm gonna spend a couple hours going and finding all the data, getting all the information, putting in when I could have just Every time somebody had a pending, go to the form and fill it out. You know okay? what? To your point on that, if this, if you're not, if you haven't been used to doing business plans in the past, and you're getting, or, or you want to get back into building a business plan, this might be a really good way, good exercise to get into it. Do this for this year, and then next year track it all the way along, and you will want to. I swear. When you really get in and see where your business is and what what it, what your business is made of, you will probably want to build a full plan next year because you will know where you were and it'll be easier for you to do the whole thing. So maybe Jan is really onto something here that if you haven't done it, really focus on this, right? Well, honestly, I'm going to set. All right, so when we talk next week, I want you to hold me accountable, Coach. Hmm. I'm making a commitment to to myself, to you, and anybody listening that I am going to report that I have completed my team's pipeline, not pipeline, my team's closing report for 2020 year I'm to date. I'm writing that down. Okay, I'm going on record. So I'll put it out there and this is the kind of stuff you have to do. It's one of the things that we're gonna talk about here in a minute about uh, accountability, okay? So let's jump into a little bit more now about, all right, so right, I've, I've, I've got a little time to make it happen. I've got one week, okay? Plenty of time. It's, all, it's moved its way to the top of my list of things to do, which we all have. But this is the point I'm making. It's just like I am such a procrastinator when it comes to doing all these things for taxes. And I don't know why I make such a big deal about it. I should just be keeping track of it. I have this whole issue around it, I guess. And something I got to work on, Coach, OK? Because uh, by the time I actually ever sit down to do the taxes, it's never as bad as I, th I thought it was going to be. No, and it's uh, really and I it every year and I make it worse every yeah, year. And always easier if you just have stuff prepared along yeah. the way. Always. Totally. So that's my thing going into New Year, be more financially um, responsible. I'll go with that. OK? Sure. So an action, a daily action plan. So something we have in the notes for you today is 
Success action plan. That's another document that we have in the downloads for you. And it's just a template. You can take it and change it if you want to. It's a Word document. I don't know if it's a Word document or a PDF. It's a PDF, I believe. Okay. But you get the idea that uh, what this document basically has a place on the left-hand side to list your goals. And then on the right-hand side, it has your activities. So the whole thing here is to commit to activities on a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, and annual. There's always tasks of, of things that you're going to do depending on a time frame. So daily, it's going to be things like make so many phone calls, make so many connections, and but make the commitment to that based on what your goals are. There's, there's plenty uh, in our spreadsheets. There's plenty of things that help you say, if you want to uh, close 10 listings, how many appointments do you need to go on and how many calls do you need to make? So it's easy to do the math and then you, based on your goals, and then you, if you want to do 10 and it turns out you've got to do, you know, you're going to have to go on three to one. So maybe you need 30 or maybe two to one. You need 20 listing presentations as an example to go on, uh, to get 10 listings. All right. So we got that number, but how many connections do we need to make in the various ways you're going to go get listings, which is all part of what we talked about last week for business planning. So now you break it down into what activities are you going to do around connecting with sellers in your database? And that's going to turn into so many calls a day. If you're going to farm activities around farm. So the, this success action plan is predicated on the commitments to the activities that you're going to do to generate business. Are you going to walk a farm? Are you going to make calls? Are you going to do online lead generation and then follow up with the leads and so on? So it just has all that in there and it's designed for you to, to write that all down. And then here's, here's a couple things that I think are important that I always like to share. Um, I think you could, you need to put those goals and those activities somewhere where you see them. Mm -hmm. So put them on an index card, put them on your phone, put a, take a picture of it, put it on your phone. So every day you look at your phone, I don't know, a hundred times, 200, at least. 200 times a day. Yeah. Uh, that's actually a great strategy for anything on your phone. I have had on my phone going to Florida for like a year plus, And I swear to God, it's all happening because partly because on my phone is the picture. Okay, right. and that's what I see all the time. Just just your lock screen. Make your lock screen be something that you see all the time. And it could be your goals. It could be your, I'm going to make, you know, 10 connections with people today and do whatever it is for you. I'm going to talk to five expires, whatever your specific things are. So take a picture of that and save it as your screen saver. But maybe even on your desktop or your laptop, put it in your workspace, put it in your uh, day planner. If you walk around still with the day planner. Just be really clear about it. Look at it every day. You know, otherwise, what's the point of doing all this business planning? You got to be focused on what you say you're going to do. Uh, use some affirmations. Like I make one qualified appointment a day. Like I, I've talked to people about that can be enough. My thing today is I make one qualified appointment. I talk to somebody. I talk to enough people that I make an appointment. That's right. Right. Well, right so, if you do that, you will succeed. There's no way you can't. Right. So yeah. we, we've already shared that, you know, secrets to success really are one to two hours a day of lead generation activities. You got to do that. And most people don't do it, Matt. Most people, and I know I get caught up in the middle of it too. And it is because there's always a million things to do and we can fill our day up with all the in the business, meaning um, I got an escrow. I've got, I'm in, I'm doing it right now. I've got multiple offers on a listing and it can consume your day just dealing with all the details. And then all of a sudden the day goes by and you did not carve out an hour for follow-up or lead gen then that turns into the second day. And that's how a week goes by and people wonder why they don't have anything in escrow because they've been caught up in the details. You know, if you, if you make an appointment with yourself for one hour a day and keep it, this is it. And you actually do the activity in the, in the hour there and not like go on the internet and go down a rabbit hole, but actually get on the phones, makes calls, follow up, do activities that you know are going to generate business. It's going, you're going to exceed your goals. Absolutely. But here's what I will say to you is if I gave you five listing appointments a week, would you make that happen? If I handed you five listing appointments a week, would you make it happen? Of course. So what happens that allows you to go get that appointment? Or if I gave you five buyers this week, would you make it happen? Sure. So why can't you make one hour work? Because it's the first thing to go when you get, you know, with, now obviously, the only time it's okay, I think, to, 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 to skip that one hour is if you actually are doing an income-producing activity like writing an offer or taking a listing. 
but then you need to double it up the next day or just make sure that you get on track with it or at least get make sure if you all of a sudden are that busy then at least have three three or four hours in the week that you're doing it or three hours one to two hours is all i'm saying per day is what's needed one to two hours per day if you don't have any business is a must yeah but you still need to figure out some time to get in there and and, and get that handled but it's inter inter interesting to me that if it was like here you go here's a buyer Oh, I can't fit that in today because, you know, I've got all these other things. No, you would clear your schedule and figure it out. That's the point I'm making. Okay. Yeah. So make the commitment to yourself and to your business to do regular time blocking like it's an appointment because it is like it's a listing or a sale because if you do it consistently. It's what's going to get you listings and sales. So we have on that sheet, you know, make X contacts daily, write this many personal notes. Actually, that's just a, a good rule of thumb to just, Talk to someone and send a personal note. If you're following with, up with people in your database, send them a personal note. Try things like send out cards. Um, we're looking at something called Banner. I can't remember the name now. Let me see. I think I have it written down. Oh, that's a bummer. I really want to remember that. Cosmo's looking at something called Banner or something. That's also a card and gift thing. And then I played with one called Thanks.io that's connected to KB Core. Those systems are cool because you can just go online. You don't have to run out to the card store. You're going to spend $3 for a card unless you find the 99 cents cards, right? Um, the Brian Buffini system, um, if any of you guys are in the Brian Buffini system, I bet you have a bucket load of cards because <laughs> you haven't been sending out your, right, yeah. your cards. But the whole business, uh, the whole idea of sending a personal note is just a brilliant idea. You know, and it's whatever else. I'm contacting this many FISBOs or expires, or I'm going to conduct this many open houses. Whatever it is that you're made the commitment to do in those niches, that becomes your success action plan. And, uh, you know, that's what you've got to write out. I, another tip that I love to give people is um, just hand out your business cards. But you know what's cool now with the whole non-contact thing? That's like the new trend, right? With COVID is like how to make things happen without any kind of human touch, which is sad, frankly, but it is what it is at this moment in time, right? Yep. Um, you've got, uh, so there are cool apps and stuff that you can do. We're testing one now where you can, um, you know, uh, touch phones and you share and you share your contact information well of course so one of the easiest ways so instead of handing out five business cards if you don't have some cool fancy app just when you're talking to someone just have a card ready I, you know this is such a simple idea and i thought everybody kind of understood this one but so let me just kind of end on this last little tip as far as connecting with people and and being able to make that um build build um people into your database is if I meet Matt and um, uh, we have a conversation, he's at my open house, I can share my app. You know, that's one way that we always say share an app, but I can also say, let me send you my contact information or let's exchange contact information. But if I, I can get my prospects information by saying, what's your phone number? What's your best email? I'm going to go ahead and send this to you. And um, so now I can send my contact information. So make another contact in your phone. That's your business contact, not your personal, where you live and all the things that you need because you can't remember your gate code or whatever, okay? um, which is me. So make a, per, a professional card and then you basically have everything that you need in it. There's so much in the phone, right? Your name, your address for your office, your all your uh, social, all your information that you need to give a prospect then you pass that on to them. So that's the that's the thing that I think we need to get continue to do. And yeah, you're gonna have business cards, but business cards, I think you gotta have them, but people throw them away, you know? Yeah. Um, so I'm not saying don't have business cards, just think outside the box when it comes to that. So the last piece on this accountability, get an accountability partner. So tracking and measuring your results. We just talked to you about documents that we have to help you. We talked a little bit more about picking that success action plan and getting very specific about what your day is gonna, in fact, Matt and I just did this the other day, right? Did we sit down and create, Matt's like, I just need a structure on the things that we're gonna post, uh, the thing, what we're gonna do for social media in the, in the schedule, and we created a six day a week schedule, right, Matt? That's right. Is that helpful? Absolutely, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a guy of routine, and, mm -hmm. and written plan like that, where I just can go through and check, 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 check on a daily basis, you know, you, you save so much time when you're not having to think about things or going back and doing something you forgot to do if you just have a simple little checklist. Super important because 
you know, there's so many little tasks. If you don't have an assistant to help you with these things, these are the kind of things that ultimately you could have an assistant do if you get so busy. But if you're doing them, it's super critical to schedule the time and carve out 30 to 45 minutes in the morning and knock out some of those tasks, right? Yeah, the beautiful thing about doing the day. checklist type of thing is if you, you know, I, you, you use the checklist for a while, but just like anything of, in a routine, after a while, it just becomes rote, right? So you just do it you know, it will, you know, with you no know, reflex because you know what to do, but the business, but having a checklist will help you so much in the beginning to get into that pattern. So little simple things like that are so easy to do and you really should implement them in your system, in your business. That's it. Just, just find something that works for you. We're trying to give you ideas, but, but don't be the person, the real estate agent that just winging it. No. Most people just wing it, Matt. They get up every day and they're chaotic and they're, What's your day going to be like? I'm going to run around like a crazy person because I got all these details to handle. And then you get done with the day and you're exhausted and you're like, I got nothing going on. I got nothing in the pipeline. So you got to take control of your schedule. And obviously it comes back to starting with a daily routine. We've talked about that ad nauseum, getting, you get up early. I, I've, I've gotten to the place now where, you know, I, I go to sleep earlier just because I like to get up earlier because I can get so much done before everybody else is up. Mm -hmm. You know, before everybody else is up in the business world and knock out these things that I need to. And then, but that works for me. Some people like to work late at night. I got an offer at 11 o'clock last night. I didn't see it till six o'clock this morning or 530 this morning. I'm thinking it's a little too early to, to contact that agent, <laughs> you know, because she was up at 11 o'clock. Right. Um, but you get it. You find out where the time is. And so this whole thing about accountability is don't try to do it all by yourself. Find somebody to hold yourself accountable. Just like when you go to the gym or you do something, it does work more if you have someone helping. Um, you can just find a, someone, if you're not on a team or or something to that effect, just find somebody who's willing to that you like doing business with and say, let's do this commitment to share what your daily routine is of um, starting the morning out right, but also the key things that you're going to, you know, or weekly, these are the things that I'm going to make a commitment. I'm going to make this many phone calls. I'm going to do, you know, this many appointments, whatever it is for you, but keep it simple. You don't have to have 10,000 things on your list. No. Okay. I mean, there's admin things that you need to do on your list, like post on social or have somebody do that for you. But we're talking about what are you going to commit? What I want you, what I recommend and what I would love to have everybody do that listens here is make a commitment to the activities that's right. That you're going to do on a daily basis that are going to get you in front of people who want what you have to offer. Okay. Sellers and buyers for real estate for us in, co in, in um, the coaching company, it's getting in front of people that might want to coach with us or buy one of our products. So that's what Matt and I have been talking about over the last month ourselves. And what are the activities we can do? that are just as it parallels for any business. What are sure. the things that we're going to do online? How are we going to advertise and market? How are we going to reach out and touch people and talk to them and build relationships? That's really all this is. I don't care what the business is. Build relationships, show value, connect, build trust. People will buy from you. That's it. Okay. So accountability, I, I've shared before, our team is doing Zoom accountability sessions where we just help each other out three days a week. Cosmo, my co-partner uh, on the team, hosted, and it's a commitment to get in at least once a week. And because we're saying practice what we preach, you need to be making phone calls. So it's required for people that take our leads. But what it does is it just allows everybody that wants to do this. And every it's hard to get everybody together. I will grant you that because we have a busy team. They're closing deals, and they might not be able to make it. That's why we scheduled three. And the and the recommendation is we know that you're doing your follow up on your own business. If you want to be able to generate more or if your business slows down, hey, you can jump into this call because all you got to do is get on calls and you'll start making business again and, and even just calling your database. So we find that to work really great. So I love that idea. You don't all have to get in a room and do pizza. OK, we don't know. It's so much easier now. People are used to it. It's so funny. Human contact is awesome. Right. But. It is so convenient just to jump onto a quick Zoom. I mean, my God, just the travel time to and from an office alone is prospecting time that you now have to actually go make more business. So mm -hmm. it's crazy more efficient. Very good. So, okay. So there you have it. That are Those are our thoughts on uh, tracking and measuring your results, but you got to do the other part first. So if you've missed those episodes, go back. Check out the whole everything from reviewing year to goal setting to writing the actual real estate business plan to this, what we covered today. 
And off, and if you really need some help with this, just go get our free course. We right. Matt and I walk you through. Uh, I think it's like five different module, uh, five different lessons in there where we even take the business plan and break it down and actually do a tutorial and show you how to complete it. And all the way to the end here, where we talk about uh, tracking and measuring your results. And uh, there's even more that we talk about on the video. I've just covered some of that today. So go get it. Go get it and be, be you know, to make the commitment that today in 2020, you've made, you're making the commitment to really run your business as a business, which starts with specific goals and a plan for the new year. And, it, and if for no other reason, just go get it because it's always fun to see the mini hairstyles of Jan O'Brien. Oh my God, that's so funny because it doesn't look like this. Oh my God, my hair in that one was the longest it's ever been. <laughs> yeah, just go get it for that and give me some feedback on that, yeah? Well, it's so gray, it's staying short right now because I'm in that place, Matt Emerson, should I let my hair go gray? One of my sisters has made that transition. It took her a year. She had to deal with that weirdness but my god her hair looks beautiful right she now. looks I mean, great it's awesome yeah. she's two years younger than me and I, I think i i don't know i'm really getting close to doing it but not right now <laughs> not right now i'm sorry i why do i always digress us off onto this other place i don't know it's all good all right that's it that's what we got for you today good stuff you're listening to the wandering but not lost podcast where real estate and reality meet join us and subscribe on apple Podcasts, stitcher spotify iHeartRadio, Google Play, and now on YouTube. All right, well, that's a wrap on the episode 140 of the Wandering But Not Lost podcast for Real Estate and Reality. Meet all of our show notes over at wbnlpodcast.com. I loved our uh, our month of business planning. It was awesome, and everyone needs to go and get that program. Um, and just go to wbnlcoaching.com. Before I forget, in our show notes today, because it is Halloween time, I reposted mm -hmm. our old podcast from episode 42 to kind of get you in the Halloween spirit. And it was called Wicked Wanderings, where we went through yes. Stephen King's Maine and uh, talked about five of the Stephen King books that are, you know, kind of our favorites. I think it was uh, The Shining, Pet Cemetery, Carrie, uh, It. Oh, there was one more in there. And, and a, 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 a visit by Pennywise the Clown. So uh, at the end of your show notes, you're going to have a little bonus wandering uh, section today back from episode 42. So to get you in the creepy holiday spirit. Excellent. And how many days left to vote? I think it's 11. Hey, and actually, that's a good segue. Speaking of creepy... <laughs> and we're in a very scary time right now. Yeah, I think there's 11 days oh. to vote. And what? I think I heard this morning I was watching TV that almost 50 million people have voted already, which is pretty freaking incredible. That's that's all. That's 10. That's what 15 million shy of half of the people that totally voted last year. So it's going to be a pretty uh, record-setting election as far as uh, count uh, turnout. turnout. Yeah, I think so. Did you did you all mail in your vote? Earlier, no, actually, we're, we uh, in-person voting in Orange County starts next oh, Friday. Right. And we're going to vote. We're going to vote in person, but before election day. I voted this week, and it was a very organized, delightful process. Took me about thirty minutes. I particularly loved that I was standing outside in a, at a mall location, and it's still a little bit warm here in Glen Hormel. And the and the the helpers were they had water. Uh, and then I kept hearing this uh, applause, and it was, I figured it was probably for first time voters. By the time I got in the tent where the, the voting machines were, um, I heard, we got a first time voter, and everybody would be applauding. I just thought that was so cool. That's right? very cool. It was very, very cool. neat. Yeah, it was a very cool experience. And so, yeah. And hey, how nice were you doing that, doing that screwy caucus thing? No, I know. Hello. But you know, it's really cool. I just, I just think that every voting season, um, I just get so tired of all the negative ads and all that. It's just, I'm ready for it to be done. And let's just get done. Let's get moving on. Let's figure out where our country's headed, and let's get this virus thing under control. Let's, just, and you know, but the, some of those things are outside of your control. So why don't we just focus on? And this is what I keep doing. Get, all, get I will forget the drama of it all. Do what you have to do, follow your passions, but when it comes to your world, focus on what you can do in your world to, 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 to keep yourself sane, safe, healthy, happy. And one way is to focus on what we've been covering this month. And uh, we've got some things coming up in some future episodes to really re reflect on what 
I really want to help everybody dive into, yeah, this has been a crazy year, but where can we find the nuggets? Where were the wins? Where were the successes? What did we really learn? And I, if you haven't already done some of that, I think everybody's been going through soul searching this year and what's important, but let's, we're going to do some, some fun stuff with that because that's all part of this experience we've gone through collectively and individually. And that's going to help us also get set up for a great new year, regardless of what happens in the world and the, in the uh, country, you can control your feelings, what you decide to get up every day, and what you can do in your world. That's right. You know, we always uh, focus on uh, gratitude in November at WBNL Coaching. And boy, I'll tell you, just to, what you're, to your point, Jan, uh, it, we've had a lot of time to do some soul searching over the last nine or eight or nine months here. And I think that there is, even in all the turmoil, there's so much to be grateful for. And, and um, I think our gratitude November will probably be even more uh, uh, impactful than it has been in the past. So uh, okay, I look forward to talking about that because I think that there's so much about how are people going to handle Thanksgiving this year and are they doing it yep. in the midst of you know rising cases and the cold weather. And I've heard so many different things from people to how they're going to do it. It's just going to be an it's just intriguing, crazy year, and we got to get through it. We've got we you know unfortunately there's 200 and something thousand people that have not gotten through it. No. Um, and you just mentioned to me before the show that you finally have you, not finally not like we're waiting for it to happen, <laughs> but it's, it's, you know, because this is it. But you know it's a, it's kind of an important issue because in the big scheme of things, right? We're there's so many people who are like, well, I don't really know anybody. I know people who've gotten uh, positive. Sick. Right. Obviously, we've talked about that, and they've recovered fine. Um, but you now know someone who has passed away. Yeah. From, from yep. COVID. Yeah. And someone. Uh, yeah. Uh, a good friend of our uh, the family's uh, brother passed away. Uh, very sad. You know, he 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 got uh, his he and his wife both came down with COVID. Um, she has recovered. He uh, got it, and it hit him really hard. He was hospitalized very, very quickly. He was put on ventilator, the, the ventilator really quickly, and within two weeks, he passed away. So oh, it boy. all happened very, very fast, very swiftly, and um, it's just so sad. And, and it is weirder. It does really bring it home when you actually are just a couple degrees away from yeah. knowing somebody that actually lost a loved one. I mean, it really changes your whole opinion on the whole thing. Not that it didn't change mine a whole lot because I've been a pretty, I, I'm not a COVID denier at all. Yeah. So, right. but still, it's sad for uh, for that. Uh, and you guys have been practicing really, you know, everybody has to do, in my opinion, it's just like, you know, everybody can have their opinion with politics and religion. Sure. That's why we don't really like to talk about it. Everybody's t entitled. That's what makes America great, to your opinions and, and free speech and all that. You know, just the bottom line here is, you know, we've, we're going to have to deal with this. It's not like tomorrow, we're, you know, even if a vaccine came out quickly, it has to be tested and it, you know a lot of people are going to be skeptical of that and we're going to have we have another year it's i think the experts are saying what summer of next year maybe if we're lucky we get this all contained and, and it can be some semblance of openings oh, and normal I it's already impacted I think so by next summer they're saying that we might be able to have the vaccine out to everybody but i'm hearing that you know we're talking well spring for the vaccine but by summer socially distant so you know it's just one of those things exactly you're exactly. right man it's not you know um by just letting, by kicking the can down the road, all we're really doing is just prolonging the agony. Exactly. I mean, it's just not why. So, you know, I, I what did I read? Or, or Oh, I heard last night on the debate. They were talking about how, you know, we're going to have the vaccine out to 150 million, 100, 150 million doses. Well, that's all fine and good. There's 360 million people in the United States. So just even that number, even though it's great, is it? You know what I mean? So there's just a lot. Well, then it becomes distribution issues. It's going yeah. to go, it's in hospitals. And so there's a lot of logistical, regardless of who the president is, yeah. it's a logistical nightmare. It's being in the army, I know, and it's bureaucracy. And that's part of what the drama has been for that's this right. whole year anyway. But the bottom line is, guys, we've adjusted. We're going to deal with this for the next year plus yeah. on some level. And the sad part about it is that it's this whole what do you do and then you know you got the i get it you know you can hear all sides of this equation and you hear people saying well our businesses are going out of business but you know what what's where's the give and take more people die so that we can get through a place so that we can maybe get to that i think it's all tied around first here we are saying we don't really talk about it but here we are talking about it but it's all That's good great. um you know but the, but the thing is you can, it's out of our control unless you're going to go run for president or 
get involved and get in policy decision making and help make a difference there. We are, it is, it is where we are here. I don't even want to say that. It, it's just reality. I'll say it that way. So I try not to focus so much on that because it drives us crazy, right? This is what's so bad about the news cycles and everything that's just turned into nothing but getting everybody in social media too, everything into a frenzy and you know, ignite the whichever side of the aisle you're on. And, and I'm like, is that really healthy? No. Oh. You know what's the best thing that I saw, Matt? Did you see the Did you see the ad for the uh, governors running for Utah? Yes, that was best awesome. thing ever. Yeah. Best thing ever. Here they are, and you know this is what America's about. Not this mudslinging, and it's not just this election cycle. It's every election cycle where it's like because it's been proven to work. Right. The only reason people run negative ads and these political consultants say this is what we have to do because people. Are, are gullible, they believe what they hear on social, that obviously has been proven true. But here's a breath of fresh air, the Republican and the Democrat guy in a, in a, in a, vi in a video, a campaign ad saying, we have different perspectives, but we can be united in believing in the what makes America great and um, vote for who you like, vote for what you think are the best, what these guys stand for. That's what we need. Yep. Wouldn't that be refreshing? I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it. Imagine if that Very was the case. Awesome. Go, everybody has their opinion anyway, regardless of all of this. Um, look, why don't we actually just go vote for, you know, why don't we all just get along and let's bring the country back together again? That would be an interesting thing if we could do that. But anyway, maybe another generation. I don't know, but we digress. Um, but there, I guess I needed to get that off my chest. Well, I'm glad. See, we had a little venting session. That was a good, it was a uh, sure. WPNL therapy. That We like that. But the bottom line, I voted, you voted, and if you're listening, go vote. Every vote counts. Now more than ever, I posted some, I posted my I vote sticker, and I'm like, vote like your life depends on it. Yeah, that that you know, that freaking <laughs> does depend on it. So. All right, right on. That, that is a, a final wrap for, for this week. Remember, get up, get out. Mask up, as Jan just said, if you haven't voted, get out there and vote. And mostly, just be forever wandering, but not lost. <laughs>